Okay, so uh, today there is, I'm not going to take the time for a pop quiz, but you do have a pop quiz. The pop quiz is open till um, 11.59. So you can still uh, get together, talk to each other. I am available after the class, but it's not like you usually because I'm, I'm behind. Okay, so let's move on with... Uh, uh, so here, conservation of momentum, last time we talked about heat and stick. So in that case, kinetic energy is not conserved. At the end, the, the two partners, quote unquote, move together at the same speed. And then we talked about recoil situation. So recoil situation are very easy. Okay, that's very easy to get it right. Um, a typical example will be a BB gun with a BB inside, so that will be before, or it could be like two person on skateboard or ice skate uh, pushing each other, or it could be also, for example, someone in a wagon like this, and that person is going to jump. So in all those cases, you have the total momentum before equals zero. So in a conservation momentum problem, it's nice to have thing number one, thing number two. So then you can write M1 V1 plus M2 V2. That's going to be before the total momentum before equals total momentum after. So after I put a prime, M, M2 V2 prime. So in the case of recoil situation, nothing is moving before, okay? So the total momentum before equals zero. So you're gonna have M1 V1 prime plus M2 V2 prime. So that will be the momentum after. And how fast they're gonna go after depends on the mass. So for example, of course the gun has a larger mass, so the speed after will be small. The BB here has a very small mass, so the speed after will be large. But this is a consequence of Newton's third law. You cannot have a push without a push back, and it's always equals to each other. So it means that in the case of the gun, here it's gonna I don't know how it works. I think in uh, airsoft, like you have some kind of spring. So it's gonna push, push the BB out. So it, the, the BB is gonna push the gun in the opposite direction with the same force. Is that clear? So anyway, memorize that in a recoil situation. And for sure, you're gonna have that for the final because it's easy to, so many problems I can come with. You always have M1, M2 equals minus V2 prime over V1 prime. Notice that here you have M1 and here it's the speed after the two, for thing number two, okay? It comes from here. Example, let's do that uh, quickly. Typical example, okay? Yeah. Oh, and the first thing you want to do, which way is plus, which way is minus? Okay, so can you solve this very quickly? So if you, if you have that for the final, you know it's easy, okay? You just have to apply uh, the recoil. Uh, make sure that you remember that velocity is a vector. So if it's pointing to the left, it's going to be negative. Pointing to the right, it's going to be positive. Are you doing it? So that's thing number one. That's thing number two. Okay, so that will be V1 prime, and that's going to be V2 prime. This is very important because otherwise you can get uh, confused, right? So uh, the guy is... 88 kilogram and the lady is 54 kilogram so that's going to be m1 okay so m1 is 54 m2 is 88 okay very good the woman 
move with a speed of plus. So plus means it's moving to the right. So this is positive 2.5 meter per second. How fast the guy is recoiling with? Hmm? Hmm? Okay, so 54 over 88 equals minus d2 prime over 2.5. You see how easy it is? Okay, so that will be a recoil situation. And uh, we want a minus. Okay, you cross multiply divide. So 54 times 2.5, 88. So that's going to be minus. Uh, 1.5 meter per second. Is that clear? So conservation of momentum is like a relief, right? It's very easy. It's a nice unit. Okay. Uh, conservation of momentum. You have a, a so typical conceptual question. Easy. Man is 100 kilogram. That's about 200 pound. 222 pounds, 50 kilograms. Oh, she's really skinny, yeah? because 50, it's about 100 pounds. If the woman, the man, so he's, he's, so it's the guy. One meter per second for the guy. The woman is half the mass, so what's going to be her speed? Double. Double, very good. Two meter per second, okay? It's easy. Recoil situation. So that's why, okay, so conservation of momentum is used also in particle physics or in astrophysics. So for example, here you have a PET scan. So when you have a PET scan, what's going to happen? They give you some um, radioactive stuff that will decay, okay? And we put some like, for example, a brain like oxygen, so we put the ra radioactive oxygen, so it will go to the brain. So it's going to decay in the brain, and it's going to produce positron. Positron is an anti-electron. So you have a positron that will combine with electron from the brain. They annihilate each other, destroy each other. So you're going to have burn out gamma rays. Okay, so what is a PET scan? is when you highlight the inside with gamma rays. But we don't say that to people, so otherwise they will be very scared to take a PET scan and they will be right. Okay, you don't want to have too much, too many PET scan. PET scan is great because you see all the details, but you are exposed to gamma rays, which is not very great. So anyway, I'm taking a tangent. Let's go back to the physics. So one gamma ray goes in this direction, the other uh, gamma ray has to go in the opposite direction for momentum to be conserved, okay? In um, astronomy, for example, you have sometimes a jet of material, like when you have a, maybe a black hole, okay? And, and um, the black hole will be like a vampire taking material from a star. So you're gonna have jet of material in one direction, but also in the opposite direction. So momentum is conserved, okay? So that's, a, of course, in a PET scan, it's gonna be in all directions. So this is called tomography. Tomography, you are using a computer to highlight the inside of the human body. And all these are sensors connected to a computer. Okay, so you will get a 3D image of the inside with very, very small details because you are using gamma rays. If you do a CAT scan, you are using X-ray. So X-ray have a larger wavelength. You are not going to see as many details, but it will be kind of safer. MRI, you are using a radio waves, larger wavelengths. You are not going to have a good resolution, but it's definitely safer. Okay, stop. That's why we are late, because I take tension. Okay, so here is another example. You can do that on your own. Same idea. It's a recall situation. The force is always the same, not the consequence. This here, the projectile will move with a large speed. The, the, the man here is going to recoil, 
but with a small speed. Okay, understand? So if you understand the conservation of momentum, let me ask you something here. What's gonna happen here? So before they don't move, and let's say next to you, you have a pile of tomatoes. So why tomatoes? Because this is a picture I found and it's red. So I say, okay, that's tomatoes, but it could work with a tennis ball that you paint in red. Are you with me here? You don't uh, don't space out, right? Can you go over there, please? Okay, thank you. So you have tomatoes. Okay, so now you have to put your uh, thinking. Uh, use your brain. Think. Don't say anything yet. Okay. So you have a pile of tomatoes. So no, nothing is moving. You are on a platform. Okay. So let's say the mass, the mass, all the mass here, including the pile of tomato is the mass M, okay? And this is a little tomato, so we're gonna call that uh, small, small M from here, or just M. Let, let's call it M to begin with, and that will be the platform and the tomatoes and the guy. So what's gonna happen to the platform? Move, very good. Which way? Opposite. Okay, try that if you want extra credit. Get a big skateboard, you stand on it. If you have a good balance, have no balance. With a bag of tennis ball, you know, the one that you get if you play tennis, and start to throw it, you know, forward. You, so which way are you gonna move? Back, okay? Because before, nothing is moving. So it's like a gun, right? So the project line is moving forward. So here it's like your gun is going to move back. Is that clear? Now, how fast? Yes. If you what? If you take a step forward or, or you move with the object, does it minimize the recoil? Uh, I mean, if, if you are still part, yes. Yeah, so if you move forward, but uh, that's another question. If you move forward, the platform will move back. That's because of the center of mass uh, wants to stay in the same position. Okay, so if let's say you move forward here, the platform will move back because the center of mass wants to stay in the same position. So that will be another kind of problem. So we're gonna move back, yes? So I'm gonna call that speed here mu, u, 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 capital U. And, and then this platform here is going to change its uh, velocity, right? So can you tell me the speed, the speed of the platform depends on what? So of course, you're, you, it depends on the total weight. You have more weight, okay? It has more inertia, but relative to you throwing the tomatoes. So when you shift your body. Look, look, the speed of the throw. The speed of the throw. Does it make sense? So you can do that experiment. You take a, you start a skateboard, you throw like, a, like you are tired, or you throw very, very strongly. It depends on the speed of the throw, right? So it depends on you. What else it depends on? You, you have a pack of tomatoes, right? How many you throw? Per second. second, exactly. So it should be depending on two things, how fast you are throwing and how many of them do throw in one second. More, more mass you, you, you project, faster it's going to go. Does it make sense? So let's, let's use conservation of momentum, okay? So I'm going to say the mass, the total mass, Okay, it's gonna increase the speed. Okay, so that will be the change in momentum. Yes. Why would the rate at which you throw the tomatoes change the final speed? They should only change how fast you get to that speed, right? 
It should be the same force if you eventually throw all those channels out of you very slowly. So you're going to see why. Okay, it's a good question. So that will be the mass times the change in velocity of the platform, right? Equals, equals, so the, the, the whole thing here is losing momentum, and then your uh, tomato is gaining momentum. So that's going to be minus mu, and here it's going to be delta m. So delta m is the mass of my tomato, okay? So that mass here, is not only the mass of the platform, is also the mass of all your tomatoes. So far, so good? And you. And you, very good. And you, including you, your load. You, you are the load, right? So you have the mass, the total mass times delta V equals minus mu delta M. Okay? So far, so good. So if I ask you conceptual question, is the change momentum change? No, it's always the same, right? What, 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 what? What's the difference? Difference between what and what? The first one that you wrote. Here and there? Ah, ah, good question. Because, because you see, I take my total mass here, and actually my tomato is part of the mass. So, you know, it's losing that amount of mass here, that will be my delta M. It's just to say it's it's the same M. The tomatoes no, no. is part of the, the total the M. The top one that you wrote and the bottom that you Yeah? Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, 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 yes. What's your name? Huh? Leah? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Good question. So. It's it's the M. I'm gonna call that M because the, the 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 tomato is part of that M here. I'm losing I'm losing mass. Okay, okay. So let's do that next. I'm gonna divide by the time on both sides. So what do I get here? What is M delta V over delta T? The 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 the, the force, right? Yes. The the First, okay, the force, I agree, the, the first equals minus mu delta M over delta T. So the first depends on two things. How many potatoes you are sending every second, or if it's a rocket, actually it's called the rocket uh, equation. So it means how much how much gas is is uh, ejected every second and how fast that gas is ejected okay so the first the force pushing the the system forward and as the system moves it's also losing mass depends how fast you are throwing your potato and it also depends if you are just throwing one potato at a time or three potatoes at a time. Uh, tomatoes, potatoes, tomatoes, but yes, potatoes. So red, red potatoes or, 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 or tomatoes. Okay, is, is that clear? So do do that experiment. Try to to throw three tomatoes at the same time, or just one, and you see you're gonna move faster. Final speed, same. No, no, because look, m delta v. That will be your acceleration. So the acceleration will be minus mu delta m over delta t. So that's going to be your acceleration. Hi. So, so I'm I'm going to show you what's going to be the final final velocity. Okay. So far, so good. So that will be the acceleration. Okay. So now let let's go back to here. So we have m delta v equals minus mu delta m. Okay, I, I go back to here. Do you agree? Okay, so that means M, let's say delta V 
equals minus mu. I'm just changing that to a g because in math you cannot, but in physics we have all the right to do it if we feel like it. So delta m equals minus mu, and then you have dm over m. Okay, your term, calculus class. Take the integral on both sides. Take the integral on both sides. So here you have delta V, so it's easy, right? So it will be the final minus the initial. Yes? And, and U is the constant, very good. And what is dx over x? What is the integral of 1 over x? Ellen, Ellen, do you, do you all agree with that? It's Ellen. Not Ellen of Troy, it's Ellen. See, physicists have weird humor. So delta V. Okay, so V final, I should have put a small g, okay? So mathematician will say it's not very legit what she's doing, it's fine. Final velocity minus initial velocity equals minus mu. Okay, that's gonna be ln, okay? Final mass over initial mass. So let me ask you something. The final mass, so you keep losing mass, right? So the final mass, is it more or less? Less, less, okay? So that's gonna be smaller than one. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna do the final speed equals initial speed plus mu ln initial speed over final speed. Delta V by definition just um be by a life initial. Why is the integral that the delta V be by a life initial? No, because I was supposed to um if I do it right, I'm supposed to take a G here. It's supposed to be a D. So when you take the integral on both sides, here it's gonna become a, so initial final. So it's gonna be V final minus V initial. It's because I put a delta instead of a d, okay? But it's supposed to be a d. So I can take the integral on both sides. So you see the final velocity depends on initial velocity to begin with, how fast you are throwing your uh, potatoes, and then here the ratio between the final mass and the initial mass, okay? So if... Uh, if you are if you if you are using a heavy heavy potato or tomato, it's gonna be easier. It's gonna be more 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 uh, speed. Okay, so that's not too hard, right? So this is actually called the rocket uh, equation. Now, if if it's a rocket, so let's go back to here. Okay, you see if it's a rocket, of course. You see, that's the idea, okay? The change in momentum for the rocket will be equal to the change in momentum for the gas. But, of course, you're going to have the weight, okay? So it just means that that equation here, so you see the first, I didn't lose anyone, did I? You see the first, the first, okay? So it's going to be the first minus mg. Okay, because the, the gravity is pulling on the rocket equals minus mu, u, u, it's the, the speed at which you are ejecting the gas divided by dm over dt. So how, how much of the gas you are ejecting per second? So that's the rocket equation. Okay, is that clear? It's just the way, so I invite you to use your textbook, okay, because they, uh, it's in the unit eight, but it's just the way I found to explain how rockets uh, work, okay, so if you want to work in uh, aero, 
uh, notate something like this, I wrote something, uh, then it's easier to understand. Now, uh, let me just ask you something. The final mass equals what? What do you think it equals to? Well, at the end. Well, no, 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 that's the thing. Because you have lost your potatoes, but you still have the platform and, and your load inside the rocket, okay? So it's like the whole thing, the whole system has a mass, initial mass, and you are just losing at the end delta M. This is gone, right? So the final mass equals the initial mass minus what? Mi minus, um, minus delta M and which is what? Do you agree? That's going to be minus delta M. But here you can do delta T multiplied by delta T. So it works like money. Okay, how much money will be left? Will be how much money you start with minus the rate at which you are losing money times the time. Does it make sense? So you have $10. You spend $2 per hour. Much back by three hours, you see how much is left. Is that clear? I, I didn't lose anyone. No, um, they have two good problems. I don't know if I'm going to do it uh, in your book. H, 815. I don't know if I have to do it or not. Okay, let's 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 try to do it. Uh, I, I give you some time to do it so you can help each other. So you have a rocket in our sp outer space, far from any planet. So that means that there is you don't have to worry about gravity. The rocket ejects burn fuel. Okay, so it burns the fuel and then it ejects the fuel. So that will be your tomatoes. In the first second of firing, it ejects 120 of its uh, initial mass. Okay? So that will be your delta M. Uh, what is the rocket initial acceleration? Okay, try to do this. But this this is an experiment you can do. It's fun, okay? You you if if you don't want to spoil food, you don't have to take tomatoes. Although tomatoes is fun. Maybe you can get uh, rotten tomatoes. Okay. So what did we say? Acceleration is. What is the acceleration? We saw that minus mu over m dm over dt. Okay, so this is the mass of the rocket. Are we doing it? So mu will be 2400 meter per second. And it says, in the first second, so when t equals one second, how much it has lost or dm? You can put delta or g, so it's gonna be how much? Yeah, exactly, exactly, m zero over 120 except it's a minus here, okay? So after one second, it's how much was ejected, right? So A equals minus 2400. Here, that's what you start with, okay? Times M0 over 120 and it divided by one because it's one second. 
Oh, and there is a minus here. So the acceleration will be So yeah, 20. Okay, so I invite you to do the, um, uh, the in, in your book, and you have also 816, which is interesting. Uh, let's, I don't know if I do it. Okay, let's do 8.16. Okay, I think that for the final, I like those problems. So recoil and... and um, because it's good for uh, engineering. So 8.16 is also from the same problem. So have mu equals, uh, how much did we say? Okay. Okay, so you see here, it says you take the rocket with the fuel inside and let's, let's divide in three. Uh, okay, no. I'm gonna make the rocket and the fuel Okay, so three, four. No, it's supposed to be four. So three, four is, is fuel. Okay, I'll let you do it because uh, I cannot even make a pie. I'm thinking of um, Thanksgiving pie. Maybe that's why. One, two, three, four. So three fourth is fuel. So how much is left? So all the fuel is gone. So how much is left? Huh? At the end, one fourth, right? So if uh, you have the rocket with the fuel, Three fourth of the fuel is gone, so one fourth is left. Is that clear? Okay, so you just use the equation. So final velocity equals initial velocity plus the speed at which the gas is ejected, ln, and here you have the final mass over the initial mass. Okay, so now you can do it. Are you doing it? It starts from rest. Ah, start from rest. So final velocity equals zero plus you see the speed at which the fuel is ejected that 2400 final is that final here no it was initial right because there was a minus so initial is m0 final is m0 over 4 if you go back to what we did just before, at the top I have initial because initial is more than the final since it's losing. So this is initial and that's final. And what do you get? What do you get? I already lost everyone or what? Did you multiply by uh, 2400? Uh, no, so one fourth. It's uh, one fourth is left at the end. Three fourth was the fuel. So all the fuel is gone. 
because it says completely consumed. So after 90 seconds, all the fuel is gone. So what is left, the final mass is one fourth of your initial mass. Yeah, but also it's 2400 times three fourths the mass because not, so initial is M0 and final is M0 over 4, right? And what you get, you get, you get something like this, that's what I got, yeah? So you, you start with a rocket, yeah? That's your rocket, yeah? And the mass is M sub 0. And three fourths of it. All that is fuel, and that is not fuel. Okay, so that is gone, and what is left here is one fourth m zero. So that's going to be your final, uh, final mass because everything is gone. Is that clear? So in um, in your textbook. They, they explain that, and I think I will have something like this for the finals. Not too hard to understand. Um, and I have the equations here, so if you want to take the time. But let me ask you something else here. Now you have your platform. You still have your potatoes, uh, tomatoes. Yes? And at the beginning, nothing moves. You throw your tomatoes, the tomatoes, no, tomatoes don't, don't bounce off. So it's, it's like a tennis ball, except it's red. So it's bounced off and you don't catch it. What's going to happen to the platform? So before nothing moves, right? This is the back and this is the front. So before nothing moves, after you see the tennis ball is moving to the toward the back. So what's gonna happen to the platform? It's gonna move forward because of conservation of momentum. So if I ask you that for conceptual question, you good, right? Because before there was no momentum. So after it must be no momentum. So if one is moving to the to the height, the platform will be moving to the left, yes? And the same idea, it depends how fast you're gonna throw, how many of them you're gonna throw per second. So let me ask you something else. What's gonna happen if you catch the ball instead? Catch the ball? Yeah. Then you're, you're absorbing the force. Okay, so what does it mean? Is it going to move or not move? Not move, it's gonna jiggle. Mm -hmm. Because before you fall, but after, I mean, before nothing moves, you fall, but after you catch. So you agree? Before not moving, after not moving, right? Do, 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 do try that. Uh, no, it will be hard, right? To have a, I don't know how you could do that experiment. To to, uh, to put something on the on the skateboard is that clear? So what's going to happen? You are not moving. Yes. Okay. So you're going to say what's the connection? So I'm going to take a small tangent, but not too much. Okay. It's just to show you how physics can be very useful. What is that? What is this picture? GFK, very good, right? Assassination of GFK. So you're going to ask me, what's the connection with uh, momentum? So you have a high-speed photography that was available uh, starting in the 60s. So high-speed photography, you can see that once someone shoot um, a bullet uh, through an apple, not only you're going to have stuff coming forward but you also have stuff coming from the back why is that because conservation of momentum momentum is a vector so before 
you see the bullet comes, it has a very high speed, so it's going to have a very large momentum, even though the mass is small. Yes? After, the bullet didn't slow down that much, okay? But you also have stuff being ejected from the front, yes? So now you have a very, very large momentum from the bullet and from the stuff, and the stuff has mass, yes? So we have a problem because, because that arrow here is larger than the one you had before. So that's not good, right? Nature is not happy. We need to have conservation of momentum. So for momentum to be conserved, you need to have things coming from the back. Is that clear? So it's an experiment very famous to do if you if you uh, you you have to use high speed photography. Always stuff coming from the back and stuff coming from from the front as expected. So what's the connection with the assassination of uh, uh, GFK? So I don't know if you know this physicist. His name was Luis Alvarez. It's a very famous got Nobel Prize. Genius. He was a genius. He was a particle physicist, and he he is the one who uncovered because he's always also in uh, geology. So he uncovered around the Earth a layer of iridium, and iridium is a rare metal can only found in meteorite, and he found that layer like. Uh, if you date that layer, it was 65 million years ago. So what happened 65 million years ago? Asteroid meteorite killed, killed what? The dinosaurs, right? So he's, because of his discovery, they understood that what killed the dinosaur was that meteorite because they were able to find that iridium layer all around the Earth, and that iridium is not found on the Earth. Okay, he did many things. He also participated in the Manhattan Project, developing the atomic bomb, but he did something else. So what happened here, there was an investigation to see what happened. There were three bullets that they, they know hit the president. So the, the investigation at the time said, okay, it's the only one shooter, they say, they claim there was only one shooter, but the shooter uh, fired three bullets, okay? So what does it mean, three bullets? It means like you take three potato and you throw them. So what's going to happen? You expect to have a recoil, right? So... He did that experiment, Luis Alvarez, except at the time they didn't have a so nice high speed camera. Okay, he did that with a watermelon. He showed the watermelon and he was able to show that you need to have a recoil back for conservation to happen. So he said this didn't make sense. The, the investigation at the time, the commission at the time di didn't. Um, uh, match with physics because if it was true that you have only one shooter with three bullets, you will expect the, the head of the president to move back because of the recoil. It didn't happen. He moved forward. So therefore, it was an argument to say according to physics, you might have more than one shooter. Right? But it was convenient to say at the time. Maybe I don't know, I don't do politics, so, but the, my point was, see how physics uh, can be used. Isn't that cool? So you have, um, if you are interested, you know, look him up, Luis Alvarez, amazing. Uh, you know what he did also? So he was a particle of physicist and uh, he got the idea, uh, you know, the great pyramid in Egypt, Right, we for a long time they were thinking maybe you have secret chamber inside. So Luis Alvarez got the idea of this experiment using particles from space, so we call them muons, okay, going through the pyramid and using them as a way to highlight the inside of the pyramid. 
so smart. So at, at the time, they didn't find any chamber, but the same experiment was done, I think, by Japanese in 2017, and they did find some chamber inside, empty chamber, but using muons, and that was the idea of Luis Alvarez. He's amazing. So anyway, our, oh yes, it was called the Warren Commission. Okay, so let's go back to physics, okay? So all this is uh, it's in my, my folder. You can, uh, you, you, uh, my Dropbox. Did you know that about GFK? Isn't that interesting? You have the story for those who are interested, right? Uh, just wanted to show you something short. Okay, Rokoy situation. See, easy demo to do, more mass, less speed, less mass, more speed. Do you see that? The force is always the same, not the consequence. Okay, um, about the rocket again, I have a very short video and then we're gonna move. So if I ask you a conceptual question, if you have a rocket, you know the toy rocket, right? And some, some of them you can use air and some of them you can use water. Which one do you think will move uh, higher? The water, water, yes, yes. Because you have more mass to push on, right? And you have more material that you will eject. Very good. So I, I had a video. Uh... Okay, but did you hear that? Water, right? So if I ask you for a conceptual question, you will know. There, there is a video, but um, uh, I, I don't know where it is. Okay, let, let's, do, let's do this one quickly. So if you fell asleep, Wake up. There was a movie about uh, GFK assassination. Uh, I don't know if it's Kubrick, maybe Kubrick. <laughs> So this one is easy, just to, uh, to, to have an easy one. Okay, so the first thing you do, are you doing it? Uh, people I lost here, come back, doing it. First thing you do is a drawing, uh, plus, minus, and then you have someone inside here, yeah, little girl. So that's before. And what's happening here? So if you are done, because you, you're faster than me, you can do the next one, okay? Okay, so uh, oh, this one has less mass. So let's call that number one and call that number two. The wagon is 20 kilogram and things number two is 35 kilogram. Oh, it's the wagon, right? The wagon is moving at a speed of 
Okay, did I do it right? Okay. So you can use, it's a recoil situation. Okay, so you can use M1, M2 equals minus V2 prime over M1 prime. So M1 is the wagon, so it's going to be 20 over 35 equals minus V2, two, no, thing number two is the girl over 3.8, but there is a minus here because it's to the left. Okay, that's easy. Did you all do that? Okay. Uh, let's do this one, the number two here. If, uh, if you need um, uh, ex more explanation for the tomatoes, you can uh, at the end, okay? So we, we, we have to do a drawing. Everything is in the drawing. What is interesting about this problem is the drawing. Okay, so you have a basketball. I'm bad at drawing, that's for sure. Okay, basketball. It's heavy. 1.2. And then it hits a wagon here. Ah, not good at drawing at all. 12. Okay, so it's going to bounce back. Super. 3.8 uh, meter per second, so it's going to be negative. So this one is going to move back, and we want to know what's going to be the speed. Uh -huh. Okay, so you can use a conservation of momentum. You can also say, okay, that the change in momentum for the basketball will be equals to the change in momentum for the wagon. You can you can say that yes. I'm gonna call that uh, this is uh, v1. So that's gonna be v1 prime. So that will be thing number one, and that's gonna be thing number two. I'm um, I'm gonna call that v2 prime. Right. So you have different way to do it, okay? You can say, okay, the change in momentum of the basketball, so delta V1, will be equals to minus M2 delta V2. Same thing, okay? It's the conservation of momentum, right? So 1.2 times, and that's the trick here. Should I put 3.8 or minus 3.8? Huh? Yes, minus 3.8, minus initial is 7.5. So typical uh, example where students will do a mistake. You see, you, need, you will have to add e equals minus 12. Okay, that's going to be the final speed minus the initial speed. Uh, no. Okay, 
Is that clear? So what do you get? One point one three. Thank you. So the idea is that the change in momentum is always the same for two things interacting with each other because the force is the same, but not the consequence. Okay, so it's always that the change in momentum for one will be equals the change for momentum for two. So one is gaining momentum, the other one is losing momentum. That's a consequence of Newton's third law. And you can say the force is the change in momentum over the change in time. That's Newton's second law. That's Newton's third law. So if there is a change in momentum over time, it must be a force. There is a force, it must be a change in momentum. Okay, any questions so far? After the, the story with uh, GFK, everyone goes quiet, I don't know. <laughs> Let's go back to our business. Yes. It's, it's the same equation. Uh, this one, this one is the change in momentum. So it's, if, if you unpack it, you're going to get M1 V1 plus M2 V2 equals M1 V1 prime plus M2 V2 prime. Well, that, that's Newton's second law. We didn't use this one, but you could, you could. So if you want to know what's going to be the impulse, if I want to find the impulse here, then I'm going to use this, right? Ft equals delta P2. So if I want to find the impulse acting of that thing number two, so then I use uh, Newton's second law. Oh, that will be a recoil situation. So in that case, it's not a recoil situation because uh, you use recoil only if it's not moving before, like a gun or, or ice skaters. When when every when the total momentum before equals zero, that's when you use the equation. Or you don't have to use the equation, just say zero is before equals m1 v1 prime plus m2 v2 prime. So when nothing is moving before, then you use this. But here it is moving before. Okay. Okay, so let's move here. A very famous uh, problem in physics. It's called the ballistic pendulum. Ballistic pendulum was used before high speed photography to find the speed of bullets. So for example, when you investigate a crime, they, they, they need to find how fast the bullet was and maybe, uh, I don't know, which, which gun was used, things like that in um, forensic, for example. But now we have high speed photography, so we can do it a different way. But ballistic pendulum is loved by, uh, you know, physics teachers because you have all kinds of problems you can use. So you see, you have a bullet going really fast. It's going into a block. And from here, the block is going to move to a, a certain height. The goal of that experiment is to find the speed of the bullet. Are you with me? So let me ask you something. Can I use conservation of energy between here and there? No. Why? Very good. What's your name? Louis. Exactly. Because, because mechanical energy is not conserved. Okay. You see, it's going to go inside the block. You're going to have some friction happening and noise. And because of the friction, you're going to lose heat, okay? I mean, you're going to have some heat, so you're going to lose two heat. So from here to there, you cannot use conservation of momentum, yes? Uh, energy. Can you use conservation of momentum? Yes, because it's heat and 
stick, heat and stick, right? So we can use conservation of momentum from here to there. And then here, the, the total system has what kind of energy? Kinetic. And all that kinetic energy is going to turn into potential. Okay, so the way we do it, we, we, find, we have the height. From the height, we find the speed of the two together. Once we have the speed of the two together, we can find the initial speed of the bullet. So again, the goal, and you can have demo online, the goal is to find the speed of the bullet and it used to be for forensic, right? Or experiment done um, on, on guns. So anyway, let's take an example. Can you do it? Yes, we can. At least, at least lay out the equations. Lay out the equations. Lay out the equations. So you start from between here and there. In case you go reverse. From here to there, you have conservation of mechanical energy. You go from kinetic energy, okay, and you have the block and the bullet to potential energy of the block and the bullet. So it's like a pendulum. And then you have a system with a um, that, that will mark how far does it go, okay? So first you find that speed here. Once you have that speed, you can find the initial speed of the bullet. So at least lay out your equation. It's not hard. And again, for the, for the final, it looks good. See, I'm telling, giving you a way. So final, I like the rocket. The rocket is in your textbook. So at least lay out okay, uh, the equation. So the mass of the block, block, so block, block, block. So this is uh, 2.5 kilogram. The bullet is 0 0.01 kilogram. Okay. Ta, 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 ta. And we have that height here. So first, we're going to use conservation of energy between here and there. Yes? So it's easy, right? So we're going to see the mass will uh, disappear the mass here so it will be the total mass the height e equals kinetic energy and that will be the final speed i'm going to call that the final speed here to to distinguish from what's happening before are you doing it and i did a mistake you should have a v square height so you remember it's that famous equation V equals square root of 2GH when you go from kinetic to potential or potential to kinetic. So you're going to find the speed, yes? Okay. And um, I forgot something. I forgot a G. There's a G. Is that clear for everyone? Are we good? Yes? yes? So that will be conservation of energy. Once you have that speed here, then you use conservation of momentum between here and there. So it becomes heat and stick. Heat and stick. So we have M1 V initial equals M1 plus M2, okay? And they move together. So heat and stick. Before the block is not moving, so it's not moving, only the bullet is moving. So you have 0 0.01 times the, the speed of the bullet, that's what you want, 
equals the total mass times whatever speed here you found. And I think you should find something like 900 something, something like this. Huh? Eight, 800? 895, 895 meter per second. Okay? So it, it's not a hard, uh, hard one. Uh, eight, 896, and it's about 2,000 miles per hour. So that's how fast the bullet is going. And you see it's faster than the speed of sound. Speed of sound is about uh, 340 meters per second. So that's why when you fire, you hear a boom, because it's going faster than, than the speed of sound. Any question? Yes? OK, about elastic collision. So remember, elastic collision means conservation of kinetic energy. So they don't stick to each other. If, if they stick to each other, the ener kinetic energy is not conserved. If they bounce off each other, okay, it could be totally elastic collision. So if a problem says elastic collision, that means that kinetic energy is conserved. So that means you can have two equations, one for conservation of momentum and the other one for conservation of kinetic energy. Yes, once it's bounced, bounced off. And then you massage, you massage and you shake a little bit. And what you get at the end, you get that if the collision is elastic, the relative speed stays the same as we discussed before. So you don't have always to solve the problems. That's what you will get after. The relative speed before will be equals to the relative speed after. Okay? So we, we already did that last time when we discussed the demo. Do you remember the demo with the basketball and the ping pong? You have a basketball here and it's very heavy. The speed is M and it's going to collide here with a ping pong. Let's say the speed is V. So they have the same speed because they fall from the same height. The basketball bounces off. What's going to be the relative speed? This is V and this is V, so they're going to collide faster, right? So the relative speed is 2. Very good. They collide. After they collide, momentum is conserved and kinetic energy is conserved if you say that it's an elastic uh, collision, so you don't lose energy too much, right? It, it cannot be perfectly elastic, but let's say it's elastic. So this one is so heavy that it's going to slow down, but not that much. And this one, how fast it's going to go? Fast. fast. So you want to have a relative speed of 2V at the end. So this one will have to go 3V. The relative speed stays the same. So if the collision is elastic, you have this equation here, okay? So it means V1 minus V2 equals minus V1 prime minus V2 prime, okay? That will be one equation in addition to M1 V1 plus M2 V2 equals M1 V1 prime plus M2 V2 prime. So if a problem says the collision is elastic, that means kinetic energy is conserved, and playing with the equation, you get the following. The relative speed stays the same 
except there is a minus because they change direction because they bounces up and you have the conservation of momentum. Is that clear? Okay. And uh, so that's just equations. Okay, and uh, if if you do the massage and everything, you will get those two uh, equations for the speed after. I leave that for uh, for the homework. Any question? So again, just the thing that you have to remember is that if the collision is elastic, they're gonna bounce off. And if that happens, the relative speed will stay the same in magnitude. The minus is there to tell you that it's gonna bounce off each other. Again, if you want to see all the computations here, you have the computation here. Otherwise you can uh, use your book. Very cool problem that you can have. Okay, I wanted to show you that, but no, no, I'm gonna lose everyone. So let's move on. Yeah. What is the difference in how energy is not conserved between elastic collisions and perfectly inelastic? So inelastic is not conserved. And perfectly inelastic is. Oh, perfectly inelastic, it's a disaster. Everything is lost. So, for example, if two things collide with each other, like 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 you have a momentum of three here and a momentum of three, they collide with each other and they stop. So that means it's a good question. That means momentum is conserved always, but all the kinetic energy is gone. In perfect inelastic, they stop. Stop moving. So like a, a potato on the ground, it's not going to bounce off. So all the kinetic energy they have to begin with is lost. They, they, they stop moving. So for the pop quiz, uh, you have two footballers, right? And they have the same momentum, not, not, not necessarily the same mass or the same speed, the same momentum. They collide with each other, boom, they stop. So all that energy you begin with, it's gonna go into broken bones and bruise in the brain and sound damaging the grass, right? So it's a good question. Per totally inelastic means yeah. it's stuck. Everything is lost. At the end, yes. So the total kinetic energy at the end is zero because everything is lost, right? If it's totally elastic, the two footballers will bounce off like, uh, like this, the bumper card. Bumper cards are perfectly elastic because they, they have this uh, springing, it's springy all, all the way. Oh, I love, I used to love that when I was a kid. And it's so fun, but it's totally elastic. Yes? Any question? So momentum is a vector, and we saw that with the GFK example. So it means that even in two dimension, momentum is conserved, okay? So example will be, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So there is no, I, I don't, uh, um, no pop quiz at uh, 12, okay? You, you you do it on your own and it will be open uh, till, um, okay, so this is in two dimension. They're gonna collide with each other. Momentum is conserved as long as you don't have external forces. Or if the external forces like friction happens over a short time, 
So they collide with each other and it's inelastic, not totally inelastic, but inelastic. So they're gonna stick to each other. Which way they're gonna move? To the right, up, or somewhere in between? Yes, along the diagonal, because momentum is a vector. See? See? So, uh, Yes. <clears throat> can you can you just trace the momentum uh the total momentum before? Can you trace it? So this is M1 and this is M2. Yes? So I say this is V1 and maybe this one, let's make that one moving faster. So let's review vectors. What's going to be the total momentum before? Just trace it. So P, P before, momentum is a vector. It's going to be P1 plus P2, yes? That's going to be M1 V1 plus M2 V2. Can you just trace it? Remember how we do it? Uh, oh, probably on the final also vectors are cool. Can you just trace it? Remember when we add vectors, we like to do it on the X, Y coordinate system. So you're going to have P1. And let's say the mass is the same. Okay, we're going to say easier. So if this one is moving faster, the momentum will be larger. Yes? Are you agree? Do you agree with that? So what's going to be the total momentum? You add them. So you know that the car, when they're going to move together, they stick to each other, they have to move in this direction, defined by the sum of the momentum before, because that will be equals to the momentum after. So this is after, and that, that's before, equals P after. Okay, and P after will be? Two times the mass, two times the final speed. Okay, so you have M1 V1, are you with me? Plus M2 V2, and yes, we say that the mass was the same, has to be equals to 2M times the final speed. Do you all understand that? Eat and stick. So it's exactly the same thing, except now we are in two dimensions. Yes? So we can, we can do it along the x-axis. We're going to have mv1x plus mv2x equals 2mv final x. And along the y-axis, we're going to have mv1y plus mv2y equals 2mv final y. So why do we bother with a notation with vectors? Because like that, we can pack all those uh, equations for each component, x component and y component. So we are reviewing the, the kinematics after all, the 2D kinematics, okay? So you see momentum is a vector. It has an X component and Y component. Yes or no? Yes? Okay, it's not hard. Uh, 
So you have mv1x. Does it have an x component here? No. Very good. So 2mv final x. And what about the y component? Is vy have a y component? No. Does uh, v2 has a y component? Yes. Yes. So it's going to be mv2y equals 2mv final y. Cool. Look at that. So after the collision, when, when they move together like this, you see the final velocity here, the x component will be vy and the y component will be v2. Huh? But that works because I made the mass the same. This is just an example. So again- so the mass was different? Yes. Velocity. Yes, so no, 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 momentum will be different, momentum. but the final velocity will be different because you will have m1 v1x equals m1 plus m2 v final x, and then you have m2 v2y will be equal to m1 plus m2 v final y. Okay, so you, you will have to play with the equations. Is that clear? My point is that it's used when there is an, a, a car accident, you can, you can look at the skid map, okay? Find out, you know, how, how much did they went together and, and how fast they were going together at the end. So you, you can go back and find the initial speed and to see if someone is uh, telling lies or not. Okay, we, we still we still have class. Is that clear? Okay, so 2D. And so now we have two equations. We have one equation for the X component, one equation for the Y component. Okay. Two dimension. It's, it's just that same thing, instead of having one equation, we have two equations. One for the x component and one for the y component. Okay, so it's, uh, it's not hard to conceptually understand. It's just, it's annoying because it's a lot of math. And you have trigonometry again, find the components of vectors. So here is an example there. Two, two um, balls are colliding with each other. And, oh, oh, by the way, if it's elastic, you cannot use the secret equation. The relative speed stays the same. It works only for 1D, not for 2D. So you're, you're good, good luck with all those ugly, ugly math. It's a lot of math. So you can do that at home here. Here you have a nice example, especially if you want to. Oh, by the way, I sent you a, a post to everyone. Uh, there is a research opportunity in the physics department, but it's a chemistry professor. So that the chemistry professor, for some reason, is part of the physics department. So if you are in physics, interested in physics or, or, or chemistry or biochemistry, it's, it's a paid internship. Okay, yes, yes, we have to move. Uh, okay, new unit. Yeah, talks. So, so far, we only talk about translation, right? Um, but now we're going to talk about rotation. So any motion will be usually both translation. So the center of mass is moving forward here. So in that case, the center of mass is making like a projectile motion, but also at the same time, you see there is rotation. So this is translation and this is translation and rotation. Okay, so let's define a new physical quantity and that will be the torque. The torque is how efficient 
is a force in applying a twist. Okay, in make in making a rotation happens. So let me ask you something. Uh, you see, there is a door. I'm going to go to the door. And uh, the door has a hinge. Yeah. See, this is the axis of rotation. Do you all agree with that? So I'm going to apply a force to make it uh, rotate about its axis of rotation. So I'm going to have an acceleration, a rotational acceleration. Does it matter where I'm going to push? Yes. So if I push here, is something is happening? Like just on the hinge? No. So the torque is zero. I'm not being efficient at all. There is no rotation happening. As I move away from the hinge, what's going to happen? Is it this? Yeah. So, right. so, so it means it's easier if you push far away from the axis of rotation, yes? And of course, if I'm very strong, I'm being even more efficient. So it depends on two things, the force, right? And the distance. Distance from the axis of rotation, right? So the torque, how efficient you are in making a twist happen, depends on the force and on the distance from the axis of rotation. Something else. Uh, if I do this, I'm far, so I do this. Is, is something happen? No. So what is it? Well, it's very, very efficient. The force has to be perpendicular, okay? If, if I push here, nothing happens. If I put, if I push at an angle, it's gonna happen, but I'm not very efficient. So the, the torque will be maximum if the angle between the force and that distance here is perpendicular, 90 degrees. So a torque depends on three things. The force, the distance, and the angle. Very good. And to pack everything together, we're going to need a new mathematical tool, and that's going to be called the cross product. So we have seen the dot product, which is a scalar, and now we're going to see a cross product, which is a vector. You don't have to worry about that. So here it's what it says. If you apply the force here, and the force is perpendicular to that distance here, to this vector r, that will be the maximum torque that you can get in this case. Here, it's, it's going to work, but you are not very efficient. And here, it's not going to work. So uh, in, in physics, we use math, and usually you multiply, you divide, and sometimes you have an exponent somewhere. So can you think of an um, equation for torque? OK, so I'm going to call that distance here. I'm going to call that the vector r. So the torque in magnitude will be equals to what to times what? F times R. R. M multiply. Okay, I'm not going to do the cross product yet, but in that simple case, you just multiply. And that's always the case. In, in engineering, you always multiply or, or divide if it has the effect, inverse effect. But I need to find a way to include the angle. Okay, because the angle here is what? So is there a torque here? Are you being efficient? Let, let's say the force, the, so this is R. And, okay, and, and this is the force here in uh, just, just along R. So the torque will be zero, yes? 
So what, what is it that we can use that the, when the angle between both of them is zero, 180, it's gonna be zero? Sign, so we need a sign. Okay, so we're going to see that the torque in magnitude will be equal to the force, okay, times R. So that will be the distance between the axis of rotation where you apply the force, okay, and it's going to be the angle between R and F. You see, if you go step by step, you understand how it works, okay, it's not that hard, except this is the magnitude. Okay, we, we're just going to have, we're going to see that actually the torque is going to be a vector because we want to know if it's going to spin clockwise or if it's going to spin counterclockwise. So you will have some, uh, we have to include the, the, a sign, positive or negative. So if it's, if he wants to rotate clockwise, it's going to be a negative torque. And if he wants to rotate counterclockwise, it's going to be a positive torque. Is that clear? And uh, uh, we're going to see that actually, if you, if you are doing calculus two or three, I don't know, um, it's going to be a cross product, but you don't, don't, don't worry. Just to connect, connect the dots. Okay, so here in that case, simple problem. Um, what's going to be the torque in that case? So this is called the axis of rotation. You apply a force at a distance L. So in that case, the angle is uh, 90 degrees. So what's going to be the, the torque? Huh? It's going to be what? 12? 12, do you all agree with that? 12, because, because you have to convert centimeter to meter, right? Did you get that? Yes or no? Okay. Uh, uh, so the torque is uh, 50 newton times 0.24 meters. So the torque is a physical quantity and the unit is Newton meters. And, and that symbol is called a tau. It's a Greek letter. Okay, so far so good. So what's gonna happen if I increase, if I increase the, 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 the length of the range? Exactly, it will make me stronger, right? You increase your force, right? Because you increase the torque. So this is a machine. So you, you increase the effort. So that's why you have long range. That's, that's the idea. You see, you have a small range and a big range for the same force. Uh, which one? So if you multiply, the, the distance here by two, what's going to happen to the top? Double, multiply by two. So it will make you twice as strong. There is a price to pay because nothing comes for free. The, you, you will have to move more, okay? That's a price to pay. Okay, so in that case, easy, where, where she, uh, she, she should see, right? So this is a lever. The force here is called the effort. This is called the load. And farther away you apply the force, stronger you are. But conservation of energy says there is a price to pay. So it means if she, let's say she's here, so how much? One, two, three, and this is one. So it will, it will make you how many times stronger? Three times, very good. There is a price to pay. If you, if you want that to go one, one yard, you have to push 
three yards. And that's because of conservation of energy, whatever is going in has to go out. So you have force or effort time distance on one side has to be equals to force or effort times distance here. I'm gonna put a prime. Okay, so that's the idea of the machine. Always a price to pay. Hey, uh, does it end now, the class? 12.10? Is that 12.10? 12.10.